Hello everyone. Welcome to Achievers IS classes. Let's begin a discussion on the current events of 28th August 2018. The first issue in news is regarding the recent regulations released by the Civil Aviation Ministry on the use of drones. As per the regulations, drones, their operators and pilots will have to be mandatorily registered on the Director General of Civil Aviation's online portal starting from December 1st. The use of the remotely piloted aircraft is allowed for taking photographs, conducting surveys, agricultural purposes and surveillance but it is barred for the delivery of items and can be deployed for spraying of pesticides and delivery of relief material during a natural disaster only on a case by case basis. For this, the users will have to go online to seek a unique identification number for each drone as well as an operator's permit license. They will have to provide details of the flight path and are also advised to keep the local police informed of the flights planned by them. There are restrictions put in place for the maximum height for each category of drones like nano drones must not fly beyond 50 feet and micro drones must be within 200 feet from the ground level. Further, drones are barred from being flown near airports, international border, coastline, parliament, secretariat complex in state capitals, military installations and eco-sensitive zones. On that note, let's move on to the next issue which is an editorial regarding the rights of people affected by leprosy. Leprosy is completely curable but still there is widespread stigma and discrimination against those affected. Further, the process of removing such discrimination has been very slow. Like for instance, the Leapers Act of 1898 was repealed only two years ago. Therefore, it is time for concerted action to end the entrenched discrimination both in the law as well as the society and in this regard, two recent developments that is the introduction of a bill in the parliament to remove leprosy as a ground for seeking divorce and the Supreme Court asking the center whether it would bring in a positive law conferring rights and benefits on persons with leprosy in order to end the stigma attached for those affected with the disease. Such steps will help remove the misconceptions and dispel the belief that physical segregation of patients is necessary and is in line with the suggestions of the Law Commission as well as the UN General Assembly resolution which sought for the abolition of laws, rules, regulations, customs and practices that amounted to discrimination and wanted countries to promote the understanding of leprosy which is not easily communicable and is curable. In combating the stigma associated, the government may have to handle the legislative part but the society at large has an even larger role to play. The next issue in news is an editorial regarding the impact of reimposed sanctions on Iran. As you are aware, the United States had recently walked out of the nuclear deal with Iran and had announced reimposition of sanctions which has resulted in high inflation and a weakening local currency. This crisis has exposed the strains between the moderate and hardline sections within the country who are divided on the issue of holding talks with the US government. Iran had managed to double its oil exports and climb out of a deep recession as well as contain inflation when the economic sanctions were lifted post the nuclear deal but the return of the economic sanctions has prohibited the use of US currency as well as trade in cars, metals and minerals. Even though several measures like the relaxation of foreign exchange rules were bought in by the Iranian government for the purchase of essential commodities, the situation is expected to worsen given the next round of pending sanctions to kick in by November. Even though the probability of war and US involvement in the region is marginal, there remains a risk of Iranian blockade on the Strait of Hormuz which is a passage for about a third of global crude oil shipments. Therefore, any blockage would disrupt the supplies and cause a panic in global markets which is undesirable. 
the US government on its part has offered to hold unconditional talks with Iran for which the Iranian leadership should respond favorably because Iran has much to lose from international isolation and even if fresh nuclear agreement is a remote possibility small relief from economic sanctions would bring in some leverage for Iran both domestically as well as in its discussions with the US on that note let's move on to the next issue which is regarding the Indus Treaty talks between India and Pakistan which are set to begin tomorrow this is the first bilateral engagement between the two countries after the new government was sworn in and the Pakistani side is expected to reiterate its objections over two water storage and hydroelectric projects being built by India during the talks. The session is also expected to discuss ways and means for the timely and smooth sharing of hydrological data on the shared rivers between the two countries as well as finalize the schedule for future meetings of the permanent Indus Commission. We will further look into this issue based on the future developments. For now, let's move on to the next issue, which is regarding the recent UN report, which says that persecution of the Rohingya Muslims by the Myanmar's army amounted to crimes against humanity. As per the report, the Myanmar's military carried out mass killings and gang rapes of Rohingya Muslims with genocidal intent, and therefore, the commander in chief and the five generals should be prosecuted for the gravest crimes under the international law. They also called for the UN Security Council to set up an ad hoc tribunal to try these suspects or refer them to the International Criminal Court along with imposition of an arms embargo and targeted sanctions against individuals who are most responsible for the crimes. They also blamed the country's de facto civilian leader and Nobel Prize winner Aung San Suu Kyi for failing to use her moral authority to protect the civilians. Further, it criticized Facebook for allowing its platform to be used to incite violence and hatred against the Rohingya Muslims. The government crackdown in the Myanmar's Rakhine state had led to around 7 lakh Rohingyas fleeing from the state who are mostly resident in the refugee camps in neighboring Bangladesh. But the Myanmar's government has rejected most allegations of atrocities and it claims to have built transit centers for the refugees to return. But the UN aid agencies say it is not yet safe for them to do so. Also, the UN panel, which interviewed many victims and witnesses in Bangladesh, has come to the conclusion that decades of state-sponsored stigmatization had resulted in institutionalized oppression of the Rohingya Muslims from birth to death thereby resulting in the present crisis. On that note, I am wrapping up today's news analysis. Do like, share and comment to support this initiative. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.